Well, hey, got a little bit of a different video for you today. I picked this up the other day. This is a stone sling. I got it from Sling Guam, and I'll put their information down in the description, but it does exactly what you, what it sounds like it does. It slings stones. But if you're familiar with uh, ancient history or ancient Chamorro history or even more recent Chamorro history, you'll know the significance of this. This was used uh, in a deadly way by a lot of the Chamorro men pre-colonial days and even a little bit into the colonial days. History seems to suggest that this was a weapon of warfare, but there's other people who think that it could have also been used to hunt small game like birds. When the Spanish arrived, these weapons were used against them, and there's a few historians who talk about just how good the Chamorro men were at using these. One Spanish priest named Pedro Cumans, writing about the Spanish effort in the Marianas between 1667 and 1673, wrote this about the Chamorro people. Their offensive weapons include the sling, which they aim very skillfully at the head. Out of small ropes, they weave a sort of net bag in which to carry stones with an oblong shape, some formed out of marble stone and others of clay, hardened in either sun or fire. They whirl and shoot those so violently. Should it make an impact upon a more delicate part like the heart or the head, the man is flattened on the spot. My interest in these is twofold. In one sense, I live on Guam and I'm interested in the history and so these are interesting to me. In another sense, you may have been like me and grown up reading Bible stories and one of these is featured in one of the most popular Bible stories and that is David killing Goliath. David, the little shepherd boy, takes down Goliath with a stone sling. And I think a lot of people back in the United States, the continental United States, have this idea of like a slingshot, like the forked stick with a rubber band in between and he goes doink and he hits Goliath and kills him and they're like how how is that possible <laughs> but for somebody who lives on Guam that story probably makes a little bit more sense because they know that these were used as deadly weapons uh, in in their past history the sling itself isn't anything particularly complex this one is made out of paracord uh, obviously the ancient ones would have been made out of something like coconut fiber or pandanus fiber and it's just two long strings with this pouch here and that's where you put your stone and then there's two different ends on this side. Uh, this is a finger sling. So this one has this loop here and it goes around your pinky finger and whatever that other finger is called. And then this knot goes between your fingers here and you'll swing, swing the sling around and then you release this end and that's how your stone goes flying. I only know this because Matt at Sling Guam, who was really helpful, uh, gave me a quick demonstration. If you know the story from the Bible, David goes down to like the river, the brook, and he gets five smooth stones. And there's a reason he wanted smooth ones. It's because you're gonna put this in your sling, and when you release it, you want you want it to come out smooth, right? You don't want this rock to be all jagged so that you know potentially the ends could get kind of snagged in your your core or your uh, your pouch here. If you have a smooth stone, your throws are gonna be more consistent and therefore more accurate. Most cultures that have sling stone stone slinging in their past just use natural smooth rocks but the Chamorro people were kind of unique in that they fashioned their own they kind of had a preferred shape it kind of looks like an American football or like a rugby ball but with two pointed ends and uh, I'll, I'll throw a picture up on the screen but they fashion those they sometimes carve them out of, out of stone or they fashion them out of clay that they then let harden in the sun or in fire I think I'm actually gonna try to attempt to get as close as I can to that rock, and we'll see how it goes.
just accidentally threw my sling in the water. It flew off my finger, so I have to watch out for that, I guess. That was actually my closest throw, though, to the rock. Maybe I just need to employ that method. Um, <laughs> so I threw, like, six, maybe, and uh, I cons consistently was, like, pulling them to the, the left. So I probably need to make my release point a little bit further back. Um, but overall, like, I, they were kind of in the general direction, so I'm happy about that. Okay, now I'm gonna try for distance, just see how far I can throw one in a generally accurate direction. I'm gonna try to uh, kind of go through a wind-up. I noticed that like every slinger seems to have like their own unique wind-up. In pitching, you know, it's kind of the same thing. So uh, don't laugh too much, but uh, give this some finesse. <laughs> That was pretty wimpy. There's one method. This is kind of the shape of the stones that they used to throw, except the ends would be pointed. There's one, there's one wind up where you can go like underneath your arm. I'm about to try it. tomorrow people are disappointed with me right now. So that one probably made it about to the edge of the reef. That's my longest one so far. I'm gonna try a little bit bigger one. that one <laughs> like sideways down the reef in a true show of talent. I've got two more. I've got like this one about the same size. Throw this one first and then we got this one which is like I'm gonna sink your canoe with this bad boy. This crab is over here like Get this guy off my beach. Like, what is he doing? So that one went really nice. Now for the cannonball. Probably gonna throw out my elbow. I already felt it on the other one. See how far we can get this bad boy. I'm done with that. So now the real test. Would I be able to defend against the colonizers or against the Philistines and Goliath? I have five smooth stones that I found. If I can hit that rock, then I will prove myself worthy. If I can't, which is possible, <laughs> then, well, everyone can be ashamed of me. So here we go, five attempts to save the world. Goliath's looking pretty scared, can't you tell? So he's got that fear. That fear's in him. He knows I'm gonna get him. Alright, this is the last chance. See that conquistador out there? Look at his little smug face. I'm gonna whack it with this coral rock thing. Show him who's boss.
pretty much uh, a shame to my people at this point. <laughs> but no, uh, if you've never tried this, give it a try. You know, I was happy to see that I could get it to go in the right direction in kind of the general area. And the first time I've ever come out and done this, like I'm pretty happy with the progress and the distance. I'm happy with that as well. And uh, it's harder than it looks. I mean, I consider myself to be pretty coordinated, but uh, this, this ain't easy. It's uh, definitely needs some more practice. I'll try to take it out on some of my other hikes and get some practice in. But uh, if you haven't, check out um, Sling Guam. Again, down in the description. Kind of keeping this old tradition alive. And uh, it's worth a shot. I think I picked this up for like 30 bucks, so it's not super expensive. And it's handmade. So if you're also looking for maybe like a souvenir to take back home, something that's like actually authentic other than just like you know, a stuffed animal of Guamamon. <laughs> um, you can grab one of these.